This past December, I was at dinner with my parents and we were discussing life and the future and pretty much everything that I can't tell you guys about yet. During this conversation, I was, I was desperately trying to explain to them what coming back from a year abroad felt like. You know, I felt so free. I made these new memories. I met nice friends. I lived outside of my comfort zone. I saw all of these new places. But those things were just numbers in an equation that I hadn't quite figured out yet. In that moment, it dawned on me, and I turned to my mom and I said, all of my dreams came true. Almost every single last one of them. Yes, maybe not always in the way that I expected or how I had thought I wanted them to, but I had had this incredible, hard, and challenging, and joyful year, and it was everything I could have hoped for. It, it, it really was. But here I was, at age 23, thinking to myself, all my dreams came true. <laughs> what the f am I supposed to do now? You want me to say something? I come up with nothing. Maybe we can talk until we figure out a topic. Been so long in my you should know about me is that I have always been a dreamer. Since I was a little girl, I was always looking forward and plotting my next adventure, whether I told anybody or not. To give an example, I remember that in fifth grade, I really wanted to be a published writer. I remember like watching my favorite movie was The Devil Wears Prada, and I was obsessed with Anne Hathaway, and that like little leather jacket she wears at the end, she's a real writer, and I was just, I was in love. I just, I loved the idea of that. When I was about 11 or 12, I would go to this little camp, kind of like, like little class almost at this local college on the weekends with a bunch of other little creative writing nerds on Saturdays. And, you know, we would sit and we would write and we would read each other's, you know, like dystopian <laughs> short fiction. It was 2012, like, what did you expect? And in sixth grade, my teacher approached me about submitting some of my poems to a poetry contest. I immediately jumped at the chance. I was like, yes, I want to do this. A few months later, I ended up getting published in this like little children's book of poems. I remember getting that book in the mail and opening it and seeing my name written out and then my work put in a real book that I could hold in my hands. And I was so excited. But after that, I got a little older and I had my sights set on my next dream, <laughs> which maybe this is like giving you guys like way too much information about me and my brain. I knew from a very young age too that I always wanted to have like my big Broadway moment. Growing up, I loved singing the Wicked CD just all the time, it was in the car. I would never shut up. I would sing in the shower. I would sing to my dogs outside because I was a very cool child. When I was about seven years old, to give some context, I took some voice lessons and at the end of the voice lesson sessions, you had to do like a little performance in front of your family and like other people's family. And my song was Under the Sea by The Little Mermaid and I got up to sing my Little Mermaid song and I started laughing and crying uncontrollably. Like this is just a thing I did as a child when I was nervous. <laughs> so for about like Four to five years, I just absolutely never opened my mouth <laughs> again. And I was already a quiet child to begin with, so, you know, that's fun. But there was this little voice inside of me that was like, Katie, don't quit on your dreams. It's so stupid now that I'm saying this out loud, but this is really how I've gotten through most of my life. I had never since that voice lesson incident expressed any interest in doing anything like singing in front of people ever again. Like my parents were like, that girl would rather jump off a cliff than sing in front of people again. And you know what, they were right. But then when I was like about 12 years old at camp, something just came over me and I was like, this is the time. I have to conquer this fear. I have to get up on that stage and I just sing somewhere over the rainbow in front of this group of other campers. I did, and I ended up getting the part of the Tin Man in the musical and I had my like little Broadway moment and it was, it was a very fulfilling thing for me to, to be able to do that. And then, you know, I went on like in high school to do a million musicals because it was just something that I, I absolutely loved and just brought me so much happiness and joy and 
it let me express that side of myself that was very much, you know, a dreamer, you know? So that brings us to college. And it sort of felt like this new playing field where everything changed. My freshman year, you know, my life had taken a new turn because before that I was so focused on being in the musicals and that was such a big, like passionate part of my life. And you get to college and sometimes there's not room for that passion because you are focusing on your career. And while I do have a lot of passion for what I study, it definitely takes a different shape. At this point in my life, I started journaling for the first time. And this is my freshman year of college journal. And if anybody ever read the contents of this, I would literally die. I so I'm gonna read you a bit. I had this night in college where I just had realized my new dreams. <laughs> um, because my other dreams were like kind of dead. Not like dead, but like I kind of did them. You know what I mean? Like, so this was written on February 21st of 2019. List of crazy things I want to do. <laughs> Number three on the list is be a YouTuber. Number six is go abroad with my favorite people. Number one is to live abroad. What's important, what I want you guys to know from this video is that dreams come and go. For me, they almost always change shape and they morph into something that I absolutely could have never expected. And sometimes they morph into something much smaller than I had initially intended because it's a dream, you know, you, you want it to be big, right? Dream big. But a lot of the times when it morphs into that something smaller, it becomes so much more meaningful and it becomes so much bigger than you ever thought it could be. So going back to the beginning of this video, sitting at that dinner with my mom, and admitting to her that I had sort of felt like all of my dreams had come true. And I looked at the definition of a dream because I was using the word dream so much that I was like, I gotta choose other words to use. But then of course, I'm just gonna put in the, dish, the definition like a moron. So a dream <laughs> is a cherished aspiration, ambition, or ideal that hits. And my next big dream has not hit me yet. And that's a really, scary feeling for me and i know that for a lot of you that is also really scary because for the first time in my life i have finally come to a point where i feel so much peace with that feeling whereas before it would have made me feel like i wasn't doing anything important that i wasn't doing anything to further my life but right now i'm just so confident that the next one will come. And I'm really kind of like enjoying the rest at the moment. I wanted to make this video because, you know, aspirations come and go. And most of the time they don't live up to your expectations. And especially if you're a perfectionist, they can really let you down. And for me specifically, it's always been really important for me in my life to slow down and enjoy those moments while I have them. Think back to that child version of me, you know, holding that flimsy book <laughs> with like a million, you know, middle schooler poems in it that I was just like, I was like one of like 500, all right? <laughs> but I think back and I'm like, man, I was really happy. I let myself, I let that moment feel big. And you know, there's always gonna be somebody who is smarter, better looking, you know, more better at writing poetry than you are when you're 12, whatever. <laughs> there's basically, there's always somebody that's gonna be doing more than you, that's going to be doing better than you, but that does not mean that you do not deserve to celebrate your accomplishments. You deserve to be so happy for the things that you have achieved, even if they're like really, really small. Like I remember I was looking back at my journal for this video from last year, and I remember I made my first $3 on YouTube and I was thrilled. I was so excited. I have never been so happy in my whole entire life. Um, and like, I made $3, like who cares about that? Not me, that can't even buy like a stick of gum anymore. God, can't, can't even buy a, a, a package of eggs. I just want to like be a person that this message will get across to somebody that it is okay to feel big things and it is okay to feel like small things are really, really big. Because I have always been somebody, you know, if you knew me in my real life, like I, I'm very tight-lipped. <laughs> um, but I have always 
dreamt big and celebrated big. And you know, when I was young, you know, trying <laughs> or putting your heart into something is often seen as uncool. And when you have those moments like that where people are not very nice to you, that can really, it can really, really hurt. But I think at this point, I'm an expert in achieving my dreams because, you know, I wrote that journal entry about the things that I wanted to do when I was 19 and I had not started even thinking about doing any actionable steps towards those. But here I am, you know, three years later and three of my list of crazy things I want to do came true. Actually more of them came true, but I'm not, I'm not adding myself like that because 19 year old me was even more dramatic than 23 year old me. And so now that I have been on the other side of this dream of living abroad, that one was the biggest one because I lived it. Like I, I, I lived every day of it for a year. And when that's over, it's kind of a lot to, like you almost mourn it. Cause you're like this, I had this like really big thing and I did it and it was great. And it was like everything that I had ever wanted. And then you come home and you're like, well, now what? <laughs> I felt really lost after this one, but I'm learning to enjoy the time between my ambitions. <laughs> and it's pretty fun. <laughs> Which leads us to um, my like little, I'm doing this new segment and I started this in my last video, but I'm doing my one thing a week that um, I did because Lisa says to have fun. So this week I went to a play and I went to dinner with my friend Sydney and this is us walking home because we're two kooky gals out about town. Is it a video? <laughs> yeah. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ba 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 